Sometimes when you have the craving for cake, you make this big, massive layer cake, and you have cake for breakfast and lunch and dinner over and over. Stop the temptation before it even starts. Let's just make one little mini cake. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna make our cake. We've got our dry ingredients here that we're gonna combine first. We have some cake flour, some baking soda, baking powder, and salt. And as you can see, it's just a really, really small amount of all of your typical cake ingredients since you're making such a small cake. Now I'm gonna combine the wet ingredients. We have our butter here, which has been softened to room temperature. And I'm just gonna beat that up with my sugar until it gets nice and combined. So I'm gonna get this butter and sugar creamed all together into kind of like a paste. I'm gonna crack my egg in. I like cracking an egg into a separate bowl just in case you get some shell in there. So we're gonna whisk the egg in. And get that really, really nice and combined. All right, now we have some oil here. And some vanilla. All right, so that's all combined. I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. And now I'm gonna whisk in my dry ingredients. Just gonna whisk that until the dry ingredients are moist. Don't wanna over mix it. And if you want, which I hope you want to, you can add some sprinkles for a little bit of a funfetti vibe. Okay, now we have our cake batter. So, I'm gonna pour it into my little loaf pan here, which I've just lined with some parchment paper so that it doesn't stick. Get all of that in there. Because this is such a small cake, we don't have a lot to lose by leveling it off, so we really wanna make sure that the top of it is as even as it can be from the edges. So to do that, I'm gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna make our own little cake strip. I have just an old towel here. All right, so I'm just gonna cut a strip of this towel off. It's important to have sharp scissors for this step. And when you're cutting it, just make sure that this strip is gonna be long enough to wrap all the way around the pan. And I'm just gonna moisten it with some cold water. And I'm just gonna trim these parchment wings. So we have our wet cake strips. It's got some cold water on it. And we're gonna wrap it around the edge of this pan and what that's gonna do is it's gonna prevent the outside edges of the cake from cooking too quickly. So the outside edges of the cake and the inside of the cake are gonna cook at a more similar speed so that rather than the outside edges getting set and then the middle of the cake rising up to form a dome, they're all gonna cook and rise evenly. I'm just gonna tie this quite firmly on there. And you can cut off any loose ends. And now this is ready for the oven. All right, so my cake is finished and I'm gonna make the frosting now while that cools. So I've got some softened butter, some powdered sugar, a little pinch of salt, and some vanilla. And then I'm just gonna beat this until it's smooth. All right. Now you can really decorate this however you want. If you wanna just use a spatula to smooth it onto the layers you can. Um, I have a lot of fun just putting all the frosting into a piping bag and then piping the frosting onto the layers. My buttercream right here, and I'll just spoon it into my piping bag, is ready to go. And now I'll cut out my little layers of the cake. I like taking a little biscuit cutter and just cut out a few round little layers, just like that. Start building it. Let's pipe a little bit of frosting onto this first layer. The 
second layer. Nice little pile of sprinkles. And there you have it. One small batch mini cake for two. Or one. Or me. There are so many different ways to make your strawberry shortcake. You can use biscuits, you can use angel food cake. I'm using sugar cookies today, and I'm adding an almond spiked icing. Let's get started. All right, now to make our cake layers, which are actually gonna be little cookies, we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. I've got some flour in a bowl here. I'm just gonna add some baking soda, some baking powder, and some salt. And we're just gonna give that a little whisk just to combine. It's important to whisk together your dry ingredients first so that when they get added to the wet, you don't have like clumps of baking soda in your cookies. And we're just gonna set that aside. And now we're gonna mix up our wet ingredients. So we have some softened butter. And some sugar. And I'm just gonna beat these together until they're light and fluffy. Now I'm gonna add my egg. And I like cracking it into a little bowl first because that way if you get a bunch of shell in it, you don't have to fish it out of this like butter sugar mixture. You can just get it out of the egg white and then we're good. So adding my egg, I'm gonna mix this back up. Now we've got some vanilla. splash of that, and a little bit of almond extract. Almond extract I find is really, really strong, so you just need a little bit of it. All right, now with my mixer running on low, I'm gonna add my dry ingredients and just mix those until they're incorporated. And it's really important to make sure that your mixer is on low so that you don't get flour everywhere in your kitchen. And yes, I know from experience. And now it's still gonna be kind of crumbly when you're finished mixing, but once the flour is incorporated with the butter, you can stop the mixer. All right, so I have my dough here. I'm just gonna bring it all together with my hands. And the dough is really easy to work with when it's kind of cold. You don't want the butter to get overworked and warm. So I'm actually just gonna work with half of the dough at, at a time. And the other half, I'll wrap in some plastic wrap and then stick in the fridge. So now on my work surface, I'm just gonna dust it with a little bit of flour so that the dough doesn't stick. And then we'll just roll it out. We want our cookies to be about a quarter to a half inch thick. And if it starts sticking to the rolling pin, you can dust the top with flour as well. So now I'm gonna cut out my cookies. I'm just using a round biscuit cutter here. If you wanna use a glass or an emptied out can, that's totally fine. And it's a lot more efficient to cut out all of your cookies and then place them onto the pan, rather than cutting and then placing and cutting and then placing. So, I've got these cut out and then I'm just gonna transfer them to my pan that's coated with some parchment. All right, so I'm gonna get these baked in and then I'm gonna come back and roll out the rest of my dough. All right, so my cookies are finished. They're nicely browned. I'm just gonna put them onto a wire rack so that they can cool while I'm making the frosting. It's important to cool on a wire rack so that they don't get soggy on the bottom as they're cooling. 
It also helps them cool faster because if they're on a cool wire rack with the air going up underneath, as opposed to sitting on a hot pan, it's gonna help them cool a lot faster, and then you can eat them sooner. All right, so while those cool, I'm gonna make my frosting. I just have some softened butter here, and I'm gonna add in some powdered sugar. I'm gonna beat that up. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. And I'm just gonna drizzle in some vanilla extract. Some almond. Great. Okay, I'm just gonna get this frosting into a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag, you can just use a Ziploc bag and snip off this corner. All right. So my frosting is good to go. Now I'm just gonna chop up my strawberries and then it'll be ready to assemble. I really like these because they're a little less fussy than building a traditional layer cake. And you can really take them in any direction that you want. So if you have a big berry bush and you'd like to use them on a little cake, you can use those instead of strawberries. Or if you want to use chocolate frosting, you can use that. Or if you want to add a different extract to the cookie or the frosting, you can totally just customize it however you're feeling that day. Okay, so my strawberries are prepped. I'm gonna set these aside. I'm gonna grab my frosting here. I'm just gonna snip off the tip of my piping bag. Then we're gonna start building these. So it's so easy. All you do is you just take a cookie, put a little bit of frosting down, put another cookie on, more frosting, another cookie, more frosting, and then you're gonna top it with some strawberries. It's that easy. And I like to eat these as if I'm eating kind of like a sandwich cookie. You can just kind of twist off the top and then take a bite like that. Mm. We have the nice crispy crunchy cookie, the really smooth rich buttercream, and the strawberries really just pull it all together because you have these nice, juicy, refreshing strawberries and it really balances out the cookie and the frosting. You should go make these.